the last lecture of this session prelim session is approach to wide qrs tachycardia for which i will be calling dr Mad madhuri nagori from bansal hospital bhopal good noon everyone uh, i would like to thank dr alok singh for inviting me here and i would like to congratulate him for uh, organizing this meeting consistently for so many years and uh, for Heart India also uh, that he has been uh, 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 successfully carrying out uh, the publication of this uh, magazine. Um, topic which was given to me was approach to wide QRS tachycardia. Uh, we know that uh, we have uh, many of us have read this topic multiple times but it is always good to revise such topics because uh, it is a commonly encountered uh, uh, tachycardia in our clinical practice and when we read this uh, topic in a textbook we are interested but when this EC this type of ECG comes to us in an emergency we are all panicked because um, in spite of multiple algorithms uh, available the there is always a diagnostic dilemma in it and we do not want to miss anything or we do not want to do anything uh, wrong in it because it's a life-threatening arrhythmia. So by definition, what is wide QRS tachycardia? Wide, that is QRS is more than 120 millisecond and tachycardia, that is heart rate is more than 100 per minute. Uh, we call it as VT. Uh, wide QRS can be either VT or supraventricular tachycardia. VT means that the tachycardia has arisen from above the bundle of his and SVT when the tachycardia, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, uh, SVT is uh, the tachycardia rising above the bundle of his and VT, the uh, tachycardia cycle is originating below the level of his bundle. To uh, list a few of them, uh, the differential diagnosis of white QRS tachycardia, 80% of time it is VT. So if you are not sure what you are dealing with, take it as or treat it as uh, VT until proved otherwise. This is a uh, said dictum and uh, at 80 percent is the majority of the patients would fall into VT category. The uh, um, other 20 percent uh, um, they may have supraventricular tachycardia with a fixed bundle branch block or a pre-excitation or uh, they, would, they would be having a prolonged QRS, uh, QRS complexes on the baseline and when they develop tachycardia the QRS would in the tachycardia would also look broad or the patient would have a ventricular uh, uh, pacemaker implanted or uh, there, would, uh, there can be a pacemaker related tachycardia as well. So these are the differential diagnoses uh, which we can come across when we are dealing with a patient of wide QRS tachycardia. I tried to put the small strips of uh, ECGs uh, which denotes all the types of uh, white QRS tachycardia and uh, when we look at it grossly we can see that it is it is looking almost the same so uh, but uh, there are minor differences in them and we need to uh, look on those minor differences to make a definite diagnosis not only the ECG would help we should start if the time permits as uh, the patient is stable we should start with a history of uh, a short history by the time the ECG is being done, if the patient is unstable, we should continue taking history from a patient and we can look at the patient age. If the patient's age is more than 35 years, uh, consider it as VT. The positive predictive value would be 85%. If the patient is younger, it is a SVT. The PPV is 70%. Ask for an underlying heart disease. If the patient is having had a history of a previous MI, it is 90% chance that you are dealing with a VT. If a patient has a history of pacemaker or ICD implanted, you know that you are dealing with a ventricular tachyarrhythmia. Or if a patient is taking any drug like lenoxane or a diuretic which can cause hypokalemia and VT, so you know uh, you, what are you heading up to. Previous episodes of similar tachycardia in the past if that exceeds more than three years, it is likely to more likely to be a supraventricular tachycardia. And a family history of sudden cardiac death is if there in a patient, then we know that we are dealing with a ventricular tachycardia. Physical examination uh, helps to some extent, but uh, we are all panicked enough to look at the patient physically. But to uh, complete the topic, 
uh, we should know that VT, the uh, S1 would be variable, there would be a beat to beat variation in the systolic blood pressure and there would be an irregular canon A waves in JVP. And if a uh, tachycardia is responding to vagal maneuvers, then we know that most of the time it is supraventricular tachycardia. If we are fortunate enough to have a baseline or a resting 12 lead ECG with the patient or we have in our rec hospital records, then we can look at it uh, to know uh, whether there is uh, was an evidence of an old MI or ischemia in the resting ECG or uh, evidence of bundle branch block. We should look at the QRS axis in the previous ECG to compare it with the tachycardia QRS axis or a QT interval which was uh, long, short or normal or whether there was an uh, evidence of pre-excitation in the previous ECG and also markers of some specific disease like Brugada's pattern or Epsilon wave which, which can look in the previous ECG if we have one. Like in, you all know that Brugada pattern look like this, uh, that is a ST coving in uh, V1 and V2 and Epsilon waves in ARVC looks like, zi uh, like this. That is, there is a notch or a uh, small hump in V1, V2, V3. Now, how heart rate, if we are uh, seeing a heart rate of a patient, then it usually doesn't aid uh, or help us in di uh, differentiating between SVT and VT. Although there are two important things which should be kept in mind. If we are dealing with a tachycardia whose heart rate is 150 or 300, then atrial flutter should be kept in mind which with aberrancy of course because it's broad and uh, extremely rapid rate that is more than 200 we are dealing with an accessory pathway that is SVT with an accessory pathway. Uh, we can also see if there is a rate dependent uh, aberrancy that means if we do a carotid massage of a patient the broad of broadness of the QRS goes away and the tachycardia or what, we, what it looks like a tachycardia is not a tachycardia actually but it was the uh, rate related aberrancy uh, can be taken out by a simple maneuver of carotid massage. This is an example of atrial flutter uh, with 1 is to 1 anti-grade conduction over an accessory pathway which I was talking about that it has uh, given rise to a very high rate uh, uh, broad QRS tachycardia that is rate is around 300 per minute and uh, so we should raise a sus uh, there should be a suspicion in our mind of atrial flutter. Now, uh, talking about the uh, third feature in the ECG that is regularity. Monomorphic VT is usually regular and the grossly uh, irregular rhythm uh, comes to uh, uh, us when there is an atrial fibrillation or polymorphic VT. We all know about it and of course atrial fibrillation with aberrant conduction uh, which good will give rise to a wide QRS. This is an uh, example of a pre-excited atrial fibrillation where the rhythm is irregular and the QRS is abroad and the rate is very high. And after cardioversion, this the ECG would li look like this, that you can see that there is a uh, pre-excitation on the baseline ECG and uh, we should remember that in such a cases it would be, uh, it would be very harmful to the patients if we give regular uh, rate controlling drugs as we gave in usual AF, that is pre-excited AF, the AV nodal blocking drugs should be avoided because that would uh, degenerate into VF because it would increase the conduction through the uh, accessory pathway and blocking the AV node and therefore the rate may degenerate into VF. So we should avoid usual drugs for atrial fibrillation if we are finding that there is a broader QRS along with the uh, irregular rhythm. Now uh, looking at the QRS axis, the SVT, the QRS axis would usually be normal but with a wide QRS tachycardia and if we are dealing with a VT, the northwest axis is what we usually expect. Uh, there would be a left axis deviation in right bundle branch morphology and there, uh, vice versa. That is, in left bundle branch uh, pattern, there would be a right axis deviation. So, uh, this is more with uh, ventricular tachycardia. And the, uh, with a bidirectional VT or torsade T point is, uh, we would, give, um, we would uh, see the ECG like this. Uh, it can happen in digoxin toxicity. And the one, uh, this is an example of a RVOTVT that is left bundle branch block ventricular tachycardia with inferior axis. So this is uh, more of uh, a diagnosis of ventricular tachycardia. Then QRS duration, another thing to look at. If it is a very wide QRS that is with a RBB morphology, uh, 
a wider than 140 milliseconds and with a LBB morphology if it is wider than more than 160 milliseconds uh, then the likelihood is more VT but it is not the rule of thumb because it can also happen in SVT. The caveat and also we can have a VT with a narrow QRS. The caveat I would tell you that uh, a fascicular VT as has already been discussed in the previous lecture that fascicular VT would have a relatively narrow QRS. Uh, complexes and also if you find that the baseline uh, QRS was wide and as soon as the VT has started the QRS or the tachycardia has started the QRS has become narrow this is an indication of that it is a ventricular tachycardia or which is near the septum the focus is near the septum so that the early engagement of both the ventricles or his purkinje system would occur and this gives this is a thing or a very definitive diagnosis uh, of a ventricular tachycardia then svt can unusually have a very very broad wide uh, qrs in following situation like uh, conduction over a uh, accessory pathway or a class 1c drug effect or if there is a diffuse sclerosis of underlying conduction system then SVT can also have a very uh, wide QRS or a post cardiac surgery patient for a similar reason. So this is an example of a narrowing of uh, left side there is a sinus rhythm ECG on, on the same patient when the tachycardia arises, then you can see that the QRS has narrowed. So this is an example of a uh, VT uh, which uh, v VT and the focus of the impulse would be near the septum. The other criteria which scares us most is the morphological uh, criteria and uh, when but we, when we look at it just simply look at only V1 and V6 so that we can uh, make uh, uh, things uh, simpler. If a patient is having a LBB morphology of a tachycardia uh, and uh, you just see for a um, uh, R wave, in a VT the R wave would be broad more than 30 milliseconds and there would be a slow descent of S wave and there would be a notch in between. Uh, various names have been given to this sign that is Josephson sign and Brugada sign uh, that defines a VT. That is a broad R wave more than 30 milliseconds, a uh, uh, slow descent of a S wave and a notch in the S wave. So this, this is a very clear uh, diagnosis of a VT and you can see a Q wave when we look at the V6 in a patient of VT but the Q wave would be absent with SVT. If a patient is having RBB type of uh, morphology of a tachycardia, then there would be an RSR pattern in V1 in case of SVT, whereas the R wave would be monophasic in case of uh, VT or and the rabbit ear that is a first uh, ear or first uh, uh, peak of the R wave would be more than the second peak that is a rabbit ear sign which is uh, not been demonstrated here but it happens in some cases. Uh, when we look at the lead V6, RS ratio would be more than 1 in case of SVT, where it's, it would be less than 1 in case of VT, because there is the early septal activation is delayed in case of VT, so the first, uh, uh, first QR wave that is, uh, that would be slow uh, uh, in a case of VT. So, and the S wave would be delayed in case of VT, so RS ratio would be less than 1. And this sign that is a small R wave is the only 100% um, specific sign if it is present then you can make a diagnosis of ventricular tachycardia. This is a uh, named uh, parameter that is S wave is notched, this is Josephson sign and RS interval is more than 100 milliseconds, in some books it is 90 milliseconds, it is called Brugada sign. So this is an example of RBB uh, type of monomorphic R wave uh, in V1 and RS ratio is less than 1 in V6, so we are dealing with uh, VT in this ECG. Concordance uh, entirely negative or positive QRS complexes in V1 to V6, that is what we called as precordial concordance, is a strong indicator of VT. We know that if we are dealing with a negative concordance, it can never occur in SVT. Entropical LV focus of VT we are dealing with, that is the focus of uh, generation of tachycardia is from below up uh, the LV and it will 
uh, um, it will face away from the precordial leads so the qrs would be negative so negative concordance will, can never happen in svt so we are quite sure that we are dealing with vt and but a positive concordance it can be a svt where the uh, we are dealing with left posterior accessory pathway so postero basal lv focus would be there so a concordance would help uh, uh, this is a, uh, what I mean by a positive concordance and a negative concordance. It is 90% specific uh, sign and uh, spe sensitivity is only 20%. Not, we are not sure that it would be there, but if it is there, we are quite sure that it is VT. So, RB uh, uh, positive concordance and the negative concordance. Early transition, uh, I would go quickly because the time is over. Uh, V2, uh, if the, uh, there is early transition, <coughs> that is V2, uh, there we are dealing with LVOT, VT. If there is transition from V2 to V4, we are dealing with RVOT, VT and V4 or beyond transition, then Mahim type of tachycardia, which is not nodo-fascicular or nodo-ventricular type of tachycardia. What I mean by uh, transition, late transition V4, V5, this is a classical example of Mahim type of tachycardia, where the uh, uh, you can say the QRS has pro po uh, started pointing upwards in V4. VH dissociation 30% times we can find this feature on ECG in VT and 30% uh, of VT have 1 is to 1 uh, retrograde VA conduction and therefore there would be no VA dissociation. So we know that more QRS than P wave will suggest VT and more P wave than QRS will suggest SVT. So this is an example of more QRS. Uh, there are fewer P waves and more QRS. That means we are dealing with VT. A cap uh, fusion and captured waves. Uh, it results when a supraventricular impulse captures or collides with the ectopic impulse coming from the lower down, and it uh, it will narrow the QRS because either both will fuse together or the supraventricular impulse can come down or travel to the uh, ventricle, and therefore we need we can have a narrow QRS in between. So this is a fusion beat. Other rare causes are Mahem's tachycardia, bundle brand uh, re-entry and uh, hyperkalemia. So and this all uh, I have already covered. Uh, we have named uh, few named algorithms to diagnose VT, but the sensitivity is very less, although the specificity is high. And uh, Griffith criteria only uh, uh, concentrates on the morphological uh, feature. And uh, Varike's algorithm has added two more uh, uh, criteria that is R in AVR and uh, V1 or VI initial or V terminal that is VI upon VT is uh, where VI is less and VT is more that means terminal uh, 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 voltage is more and uh, uh, initial uh, voltage is less initial uh, in 40 milliseconds and the last 40 milliseconds of the QRS then we call it as VT. Uh, ACC algorithms uh, uh, does not say anything new. Uh, it is the sum of our flowchart of the same watch which we have already discussed. The new One new algorithm has come that is a basal algorithm which has uh, one criteria that is structural heart disease plus lead to uh, which is showing time to first peak more than 40 milliseconds and lead AVR time to first peak more than 40 milliseconds. All th these three put together, if uh, the uh, score is less than uh, or equ uh, equal to one, then the, uh, we have we are dealing with SVT. If it is more than equal to two, then we are dealing with VT. So principle of management: don't panic. We should make a diagnosis. If it is a white QRS. Uh, tachycardia and uh, it is regular we know that 80 percent it is vt and add on history we find that it is, there is a history of mi chf valvular heart disease the probability increased to 90 to 95 percent we find a disassociated p wave in our ecg then we know that it is 100 percent vt if qrs concordance is there uh, then 90 to 95 percent vt and negative concordance is there which we already discussed it is 100 percent vt and if we do not find all this and 80 percent only we are sure then we can give adenosine to uh, uh, suspect uh, uh, to uh, take out the SVT if it is there and if the rhythm is irregular we know that we are dealing in uh, with AF in 90 percent of cases and uh, uh, if it is WPW along with WPW syndrome very high heart rate uh, the uh, treatment differs is that we should avoid uh, B, uh, AV nodal blocking drugs and give a DC cardioversion at a higher joules that is 200 joules polymorphic VT has already been covered to sum up 
uh, among the white QR is tachycardia, VT is more common than SVT and uh, more so if the patient ha is having structural heart disease at the background, heart rate, symptoms, hemodynamic <coughs> differentiate <coughs> and no <coughs> algorithm has 100% predictive accuracy. Using all criteria, accurate diagnosis is possible in 90% of patients and in when in doubt, it is safer to treat as SVT. You should rely, you should not rely on monitor, just do a 12 lead ECG with a rhythm strip, procainamide or amiodarone as initial therapy, don't give virapamil and if irregular, avoid AV nodal blocking drugs and urgent DC cardioversion in all unstable patients don't think and don't think anything else thank you for the patient listening <coughs> sorry for exceeding the time thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr madhuri for your uh, lucid uh, talk on this uh, white qrs tachycardia if if there is any questions from the audience or any comment 